reporter from The Moment magazine. When they launched two years ago in their launch issue, they did a big profile of like Fan, so he's coming to basically refresh that. If they're doing a task and they, you know, they're thinking the breaks are too long for them. Okay. And they've been at it a while now, so they're, they're used to the used to the, the rhythm. We've, uh, we've so. got Alex with us today, it's a new day adventurer. Um, we are expecting three more who aren't here yet, so they may come toddling in. So what we normally do, Alex, is um, catch up in the beginning on the state of the archaeology, so what we did yesterday, what we're going to do today, um, any sort of housekeeping type stuff, and then we assign um, the trench work groups, and everybody who's been here for a while goes off, and um, you're going to go over to the visitor center for an, a short orientation to the site and a risk assessment, and then you'll be in the trenches by 10. So I think this is, 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 is quite a, a good story really because you know all our archaeological um, questions were really dealt with by our dry land trenches, trench one and trench two, and these water, these test pits that, that the guys have been doing, um, test pit one, two and three, were really just to figure out uh, what the preservation environment was doing, but I think in actual fact test pit three that's just going in now will be, will be a really serious archaeological question. You know, what is the nature of this platform? Is it the size that we thought it was? Is it more complex? Is it an actual island or is the little inlets? That, and that's the reason why we couldn't see uh, the, the wood within in the auger. So for the lads that are toiling away in test pit one, John working like a trooper there, Ben and so on, and anyone else who drops onto that today, that is perhaps what I'm most interested in. And I think that's gonna give the best archaeological question out of this project. Alright, everybody out, that's you two. Okay, so we're um, in the early stages of digging test pit one. Um, basically we're removing the sort of upper alluvial clay. Um, there's about sort of 50, 60 centimetres of this sort of flood deposit. And basically what we found as we've been excavating through it um, is some animal bone. So we've got here what's probably either sheep or goat jaw. Um, this is probably from a pig. Um, we'll send these to the animal bone specialist and they'll be able to tell us a bit more accurately to species. Um, we've also had um, a piece of what appears to be some prehistoric pottery. Um, later on today, hopefully, we'll get through this alluvial clay, come down onto the top of the sort of upper dried out peat layer, and that's where we're hoping to hit the wood um, wooden platform and wooden archaeology um, and then we'll do the same as what we've been doing in the other test pits clean around that expose it so we can see what sort of condition it's in so when we turn it around it's up it's just looking at one continuous plane which means we can then measure use this and the star to measure up and down from known points down onto unknown points yeah okay i've got it coming out from these upper levels is not in very good condition. We can see that it's, I mean, this is a piece of round wood which instead of being round has been really squashed down quite flat by the weight of the peat. It's not very strong this material. So we're going to gently clean around it but it's likely that some of this might fall to bits. But what we're looking to do is get as much information from it as possible and to take subsamples. So there we go. We can see that what was once, we've got bark on this side and bark on this side and something else stuck to it here. So we can see that it's become very, very compressed and flattened down. So we're gently going to clean around these and for the most part we're going to record them, take the appropriate subsamples from them, definitely for species identification and from some pieces to do decay analysis studies and then the remainder is going to be discarded. The bulk of the wood from Flagfen does end up being discarded although we conserve a, a sort of a cross-section of material so some of the posts get conserved, all the artefacts get conserved and 
in some ways all of it is conserved by, uh, by written, written, drawn and photographic record. So every single piece has a photograph, every single piece appears on a plan, and every single piece has a contact sheet filling in for it. Whilst I was cleaning, it's absolutely amazing. We found more post holes in the bottom of this ditch. So there's one there, one to point to you. There's one here, there's one here. one here. And where George is, there's one here. Now we couldn't actually see these in plan and you can't actually see them in section either, which potentially means that these post holes are older than this ditch and older than the current post alignment. So I'm very happy about that. Dave's doing a little dance in the corner. It's not pretty. <laughs> Told ya. It's not pretty. <laughs> so we're coming towards the end of day 11, uh, which I can't believe means we're basically halfway. And um, we're at a really amazingly exciting point. Um, in most of our trenches, we're down to a place where tomorrow, we're going to be actually going even further back in time and getting towards the, the beginning of our story here at Flag Fen. And in Trench 1 today I finally got to do my first bit of digging, which uh, was more than I could have possibly hoped for because I got to look at um, some of the wood that we've actually got upstanding in one of the post holes and take a look at that in section and actually start to see um, outside of the wood the actual post hole that they would have dropped it into. What we're seeing is the clay material that was then put into the post hole and packed against the, po the post to keep it upright. So um, for a tiny bit of digging it was, it was an amazingly fun afternoon. Um, our archive project is up and running waiting for Duncan Brown of English Heritage to come back and see how we're doing next week. And uh, even better, today Brendan has got the ARC system going, which is the archaeological recording kit, that um, system that was developed by LP Archaeology in London, and which we're trialing here, which basically means that as we upload our data from the site, basically it goes online and it's publicly available almost instantaneously. And what we're hoping this means is that the data will be available to the world, and you know anybody looking at that with a thought or an idea about, about what we're digging here can reach out and you know share share their theories with us about what we're doing. So um, as you can see, it's a bit of a, a wet finish to the day, but that's okay. Uh, we've got the night off with no speaker and we're gonna have a little bit of an early dinner and maybe an early night, but who knows, you never know what goes on in the roundhouse after hours. <laughs>